Hi, this is Alama Sushi and this is the third video of How to ETH 101 and this is the video that everybody was waiting for because everybody is very curious about this. The life expenses in Zurich as an ETH student. And as a shortcut, I put this here. If you don't want to watch the rest of the video, here is your screenshot. <laughs> In the video, I will be talking about all of them in detail and it will be a long video. So let's get started. I will be starting from the one that has the most influence on your monthly expenses to the least. Yes, <laughs> here I go. The first thing is accommodation. I mean, the rent that you pay to the place that you're staying. Yay! Where are you going to stay? This is <laughs> the first question you should ask. Uh, after you accepted the place at ETH, is the extent to the immigration guidelines, where actually it talks about the things that you need to have for visa which I talked about in the previous video and also tells you to apply for a place to stay because ETH has an agreement with an organization or a company called VOCO this company actually supplies accommodation for students it has some certain requirements so you need to be a student, you need to be under a certain age in Switzerland, it is not easy to find a place to live and also it's really expensive. You really would like to stay in a VOCO place. But this may also be expensive, but this may be also your only chance this I will be talking about. Good news is that as an international, we have the priority here to have a room in one of the VOCO places. And I guess this is the only thing that the internationals are prioritized in Switzerland. <laughs> so, for you, <laughs> I opened the Voco website, entered all of these uh, places, dormitories, apartments that Voco have for students in Zurich and wrote down the minimum and the maximum prices of those places and then I came up with the minimum or the maximum rent you may pay if you're staying in a Voco house which may be as low as 250 francs per month which is very cheap and it can be as much as 1350 francs but as a weighted average I found it to be around 578 and as an average in their website it says around 580 francs cheaper room number is I guess more than the expensive rooms and actually most of the time the expensive rooms are for PhD students they got salary and they can actually afford that much you apply to get a place and you don't know where you're going to get so you may get the cheapest one you may get the most expensive one what I did was to write down the three choices that I really would like to have if they ever check that note thingy in the application for housing. Maybe they did, maybe it was a coincidence. I got the first thing that I had written on the notes. But also it was important that you make this application early enough. I did it, I guess, after a couple of days I got the email. This may have played an important role for me to get a place too because some of my friends were not able to get a place even from Voco, even though they were international because it was full. But after they waited for some time, because some students didn't accept the offer, some rooms are getting also again empty and they are giving it to the students who weren't able to get the rooms. So after a while they were able to get it. But if you're really, really unlucky, you need to go and check some websites like VG Zimmer or UO that I will be talking about so that you can find a place. And in Zurich, housing is really a problem. There are not much places to live so that many people are living together with other people. They call it WG, <laughs> where students or young adults are sharing flats to pay less rent. <laughs> so you need 
check those things. Also, there is a Facebook group, but this I will be talking about later on. For Voco, you may also have got a plate that costs a thousand francs. This you may not want and reject the offer, but as I told before, it's maybe really hard to get a place in Zurich. And it's getting much harder if you're not in Zurich because people would like to see you in person before renting it. So from an, another country, having an application to a house in Zurich is kind of hard. It's not impossible. But it is hard. Also, they are giving it for a semester. If you're lucky, you got it for a year. But for my case, even though I asked for a year, I got it for a semester. And around November, they are sending you an email for you to extend. If you're not fast enough to give an answer to email that yes, I would like to extend my contract, you may lost your place and you need to look for some other place. And at most, you can stay kind of one year. Actually, there are some vocal places that are also use your contract more than one year, but these are not specifically for ETH students. All these things you need to sort of things out, it's not easy. It was another organization where you apply by only yourself or with your friends, like saying that I want to live alone, I want to live with this much people. If you're applying with your friends, I would like to live with these people. Can you please find a house? To find a place for Mewell, there are some requirements that you need to be uh, younger than 30 years old. You shouldn't be earning more than 30,000 francs per year. So you basically need to be a student. There were some other things, but they're like with these two important criteria to apply Mewell. And then they send you places that they have. So they are basically flats or maybe some family houses. You go there, you check it, then you say, yeah, I would like to live here, we would like to live here. And then you got either accepted or rejected. And the more you got rejected from the places that you visited, the higher the chance that you will get the next place that you're going to visit and say, yes, I would like to live here. Yeah, after one year living in Voco and no longer having the contract, we applied to Uwo for the second year. After the 10th visit to a place, we got a family house and it's a nice place. <laughs> it is actually really cheap. Finally, this WG Zimmer thingies or sharing is caring page in Facebook. You can look for places. There may be also sublets that maybe a student leaving his her room for a semester because they're going to an exchange or Erasmus. You may find places like that or you may find someone who is getting graduated and the rest of the flat is looking for a new person to take over this person's room. So you may be the next person but you need to have an interview with these people. And if they like you, you have a place to live. But for the price comparison, I will be going with the Vocos prices because other things are really varying. It's, but I may say at least 600 in WG, like with living people. And if you would like to live alone by yourself without a salary, it's so hard but yeah it can go as much as 2000 it's really up to the thing that you find your budget and yeah all of these things <sighs> okay <laughs> then comes the second uh, most contributing part uh, to your expenses in your life in zurich <laughs> food zurich i mean <laughs> switzerland itself is expensive Let's accept this. And Zurich is also expensive in Switzerland. Also the food. For lunch and dinner, if you don't like cooking, you may go to the canteens of Etaha or University of Zurich. As a student, you are also able to eat at the Unimensa. We call canteens of these universities as Mensa. And in ETH Mensa, where we call it Polymensa, for a student, a meal is 6.2 francs, and in Unimensa, it's 5.4. And they are really close to each other, so you can select whatever you want. There are actually lots of different places around the main building or in the Hungerberg campus for ETH students, but Mensa's are the cheapest places to eat something. Thinking about you're having your lunch plus dinner for 20 days in a month, it makes 216 francs per Unimensa and 200 
248 for ETH Mensa. Plus the money that you will spend for the breakfast that you will prepare. Also weekends, the breakfast, lunch and dinner that you will prepare for your own. You can say it may cost around 150 to 200. If you cook everything at house, it's really hard to guess because everybody cooks something different or eat something different, eat less, it's much. But let's say at least 300 and at most it can go to anything actually. But at least 300 and let's put 600 double of it as a maximum for food. Yeah, if you're really curious, I can say the, the cheapest burger plus the smallest french fries with the smallest drink in McDonald's costs you around 10 francs. A pizza in Domino is around like 15 francs or so. You may find a deal for 12 some days, but yeah, these are the prices that you will get. And dinner, most of the places it's 10 francs. The cheapest that you can find is Mensa, for sure. <laughs> and the health insurance. This will be really complicated. You need to have a health insurance to live in Switzerland. And it cannot be any uh, health insurance. It needs to be a Swiss insurance. And maybe for European students, there is some different things apply. Uh, but as an international, you need to have a Swiss health insurance. This is the third most contributing thing to your expenses monthly in Zurich. But actually, you're lucky because you're a student. <laughs> because there are student prices which are specific to ETH students. So go and check the link I will be putting below also in the description. There are different things and there are it is also a complicated system. This is a basic health insurance, which dentists are not covered. <laughs> and that dentists are so expensive. So my advice is if you have wisdom to that is to take them out in Zurich. Dentist itself is expensive. Yeah. Okay. You can pay at least 64 francs or at most 115 if you're under 25 years old. It's maybe also 175 if you're older than uh, 20 years old. Um, the thing, what makes the difference between them is not what they are providing. The difference is the deductible. What is deductible? This was really confusing for me when I get there. I will try to explain it as simple as I can. You're paying the monthly price to this health insurance. No matter what, if you go to doctor, if you don't, you need to pay this. But if you have to go to doctor and you have this cheapest option with 64 francs that has a 1,500 deductible, that means you need to pay all the expenses until 1,500. It's not covered by your insurance. You are responsible for the first 1,500 per year. So if you had less than 1,500 in one year and the next year you again spend it some money for your health, they don't add up. Every year it starts from zero. So depending on how often you need to go to your hospital from your history, select a plan that makes the most sense to you. And also this group Mutual ones doesn't have the 10% thingy, which after you finish the deductibles, you still need to pay the 10% of the health cost that you had to pay. But in the group Mutual, I guess, if I'm not wrong, you don't need to pay anything. And for me, I got the most expensive one <laughs> in my first year. So it really depends on you. And also they are advising you to go to a pharmacist before going a doctor if you have a basic cold or a basic thing that has small cuts because doctors are expensive and in pharmacy it may be cheaper and they will give you the medicine right away if this is not a really big problem otherwise you need to go to the doctor and then you need to pay a certain amount of money that changes from doctor to doctor, place to place. Very complicated, as I told you. From your past history with the hospitals, doctors, select which suit you the most. The next thing, transportation. This may be actually higher than the if you selected the cheapest insurance and depending on where you live. This is also a complicated thing that I'm going to explain right now. <laughs> okay. I'm planning to put the map here. <laughs> the 
These are the zones that Zurich has for the transportation. What are these zones? They divided Zurich into zones for transportation. And according to the zone number that you need to pass, not even use, but pass, you need to pay for zones. The cheapest is to live in 110 zone, which both campuses, the main and the uh, Hungerberg campus is in. So that as a monthly membership, you will pay 65 francs per month. If you're living in another zone, like me, that in the first year I was living in Dietikon, which adds one more zone to the 110. Yeah, 110 is counted as two zones. So I was having this three zone ticket for a month and it was 87 francs. This is also for people who are under 25 years old. After 25, you are paying more for these monthly tickets. I am just assuming that you're <laughs> younger than 25. It really makes sense to get a monthly ticket because if you don't have health fare, which is also another thing, a card that you pay for once, it is around 150-ish. I don't really recall that. You paid for once and then all the tickets that are not like monthly or yearly things, you pay the half of the price of the ticket. Without forgetting, there are night buses on Friday and Saturday nights. And in order to use them, you need to get a night ticket, which costs for five francs. So this is plus to your monthly ticket. It's not counted, it's something extra. This was the transportation. And then we come to communication. I mean, the calls, SMS, and internet. So it's really revised a lot. Tell you that you can pay at least this much. It really depends on which discount you encountered when you are getting your uh, contract with a mobile phone subscriber. I mean, the list is again, I'm taking it from the handbook. Seoul, Sunrise, Swisscom, Migros Budget Mobile, Yellow, Levera, Aldi Mobile, Coop Mobile. But the most used ones are the Sunrise and Seoul. Even though the others on the list are most of the time cheaper than these two, before you have a residence permit, you may not be able to eligible to get the contract with these dealers. So you may need to start with Sunrise and Salt. Sometimes they also require residence permits for some of the deals. But actually around September, since they know their students are arriving, they're making some discounts on their deals. Also, what you have in the subscriptions also change, right? So it's really... <laughs> confusing thing to even make an excel sheet about it because they all offer different things. The cheapest was from yellow. So I found it 12.5 francs, which was unlimited calls, SMS, but some limited uh, internet, maybe around 5 gigabytes. Maybe the cheapest option is also get a prepaid card so that you will have a SIM card. You may make some calls if you need to and you always connect to Wi-Fi whenever there is a Wi-Fi connection or you pay for the internet uh, from the rates that's prepaid card that has or there are some packages for internet so it really depends on you let's say at least 15 per month to depends on what you want unlimited everything across Europe it can go up to a hundred let's say 40 for a good deal yes <laughs> I guess I completed my list of your expenses in one month as an ETH student in Zurich. I hope I didn't miss anything. I mean, besides going to clubs, <laughs> even though in Corona times none of them were open. And I talked about restaurants that you can go, like, yeah, restaurants eating a proper meal with a drink would cost you at least 30, I would say, in a good restaurant. Not good, okay. In an average restaurant, <laughs> it would probably cost you around 30 francs. Well, you may want to visit other cities in Switzerland and ticket prices. Probably I will be talking about these in the Life in Zurich video, but the bare minimum is not what they 
worth thinking like a thousand seven hundred fifty francs is too much for me you can live for less than a thousand if you don't have any scholarship or something else you have to show that twenty one thousand francs on your bank account and talking about banks where you're going to keep your money in Switzerland. It may not be the best thing to keep your money in your home country because of the rates they're, that they're always changing all the transaction fees and whatsoever. So you want to keep them in a Swiss bank. So there are four major banks in Zurich where students have their accounts in. Credit Suisse, UBS, ZKB, Zurich Cantonal Bank and the Post Finance. Bank. All of them offer you a free of charge account so that you don't pay money because you have money in that bank. And then <laughs> they also offer you a free of charge uh, credit card. Apart from post finance, which I couldn't find some special offers for students, but in all other three, you have discounts in different companies, I don't know, clothing uh, brands or coffee shops or restaurants. You may have some discounts if they have an agreement between the bank you choose your student account to be in. But besides that, for example, Credit Suisse lets you to get a movie ticket for 13 francs, including your popcorn and drink. Normally, that will probably cost you in total around 30 francs or something. UBS gives you a voucher that you can use in the places that they have agreed, so that's worth for 40 francs and I think Migro was in that. Migro is one of the supermarkets in Switzerland so you may do your groceries and also if this does not change any other person who opens an account in UBS referencing you they're also giving you another voucher that's worth maybe again 40 francs and it's this I don't remember but yeah you'll again get a watcher to be able to be spent in one of the agreed places this maybe in long run saves you the most money <laughs> I guess what also the Cantonal Bank offers is the night tickets that I mentioned to you. So if you have a student account at ZKB, you actually need to pay for the night buses in Zurich. What is nice is that you can open an account in all of these banks for some reason. And then you can get uh, advantage of uh, these accounts. But having too much accounts is always, I mean, painful. You need to deal always all the documents. After a certain time, they will ask you, are you still a student? So you need to show them you're still a student. This happened to me each semester. I need to go to the bank and say, them, yeah, I'm a student. Hey, hi, I'm still continuing. Yeah, up to you. If you would like to, you can. I think there is no law against it. Which one you prefer, you can just put your money in. It's free of charge because you're a student. Being a student is nice in Zurich. The real pain is after you're not a student. <laughs> but let's come to this point later on. This is the end of the expenses in Zurich as an ETH student <laughs> video. I hope it was helpful. It was so long and tiring. I hope I was able to tell everything in a simple form and I will be going to edit this, it will be a painful thing, there will be lots of things that I cut. <laughs> you're lucky that you're not going to listen to all of this. Thank you very much for watching and I will be continuing with studying at ETH. See you, bye!